If you click on today's video, you probably are looking for a way to make sure that your Final Cut Pro is faster. Well, have you ever wondered why are the editors get their video out fast? Is it because they have great computer? Well, if you look back prior to the M1, when they use Intel MacBook, they still get their videos delivered quick. Well, what is the reason behind that? It's because they know the two or three tricks that allow them to edit faster. And if you're a macOS beginner or a Final Cut Pro beginner, in today's video, I'll be sharing exactly just that on how to make sure that your Final Cut Pro is more efficient and also how to edit faster with your Final Cut Pro. If you go to your Final Cut Pro, here's a project that I have been working on for the past week. And as you can see, I have crazy amount of project, nearly 31 projects. So many files that are 4K shot in S-Log3 and a lot of data basically is on this entire library with 34 projects. And a reminder, I am using not the M1 Pro, not the M2 Pro, I'm using a very old M1 MacBook Pro that was created in 2020. It is good. However, if you don't use any of these tricks, editing will be slow F. And I experienced it the hard way before learning these tricks. So, the first step to this trick is the idea of proxy media. You might have heard it before and you might not know it. Let me explain to you. A proxy media is basically a downscale resolution of your footage. Let's say you record in 4K, you create a proxy media, that file will be 1080p or 720p depending on your choice of selection. How to create it, you ask? Well, you go to import media, which is right here, and basically you select the file that you want to import inside your Final Cut Pro. Let's say I want to select all of these, and basically you click on not optimize media, but create proxy media. And I don't suggest you to click ProRes, but instead click H.264 and basically import it in. Because I've already imported it in, it is already inside of my Final Cut Pro. So after you import it, it will go through the process of importing media and then transcoding and analysis. So why proxy media? Well, firstly, creating a proxy media will allow your render files to be a lot less, meaning it will not take up a lot of storage on your library. Sometimes if you edit on the original media, it will consume so much space on your laptop. But if you edit in proxy media, it will consume a lot less space. So to switch to proxy media, you go to view, and then you click proxy only or proxy preferred. The difference between the two, a lot of people do not explain this, but proxy only means that it only use the proxy file that you have generated or transcoded. Whereas proxy preferred means that it preferred to use the proxy file if you have it, but if you don't have it, the Final Cut Pro will automatically use the original media, which basically is the original file. So what I normally do is I edit in proxy preferred or proxy only, and then I finish editing the project. For example, after I finish editing uh, the entire project, I then go to optimize original and then I render. Do not render in proxy media because Final Cut Pro will give you a warning. You basically have to click no and then you can go back, click original media and then you can export it. So before we move on to the next step, I want to show you a comparison between using a proxy media and the original media. So here I am using the proxy preferred. If I were to play back, I will silent all of the audio. It is basically a lot smoother there. It's rarely a hiccup. All of these footage are color graded. Um, this is an iPhone footage. Uh, very soon it will go to the Sony footage, which, which is shot on s 3. Very small and minimal amount of hiccup and lag. If I were to go to the original or optimized media, it will have a lot more lag. As you can see, I click space, very laggy, and the frame keeps dropping, and you barely are able to edit on it. And that is the small difference that professional do that allows them to edit faster and deliver their work a lot faster. So make sure you use this trick. The next trick that I use if you have an Intel Mac is to basically edit your footage uncolor graded without any color grading whatsoever. So let's say you have already tested your color grading. You select all of these adjustment layer and click V. So I will click V and you will see that my footage become not color graded, which is the S-Log3. So what this does is that it allows your footage to run smoother with no lag, even if you use an Intel Mac, because I used to use an Intel Mac before and it was a nightmare. And I always edit like this. And if you have so many effects and your laptop is slow, even if you use all of these tricks, another way to do is basically you, you click V on absolutely everything like this, and then you edit the portion of the footage that you want to edit. This way, you basically have no rendering to do whatsoever. The Final Cut Pro do not recognize any of this because there is no graphic that is being loaded or effects that is being loaded. So you can select a portion and then you can edit only that portion. 
Doing this will allow you to be more efficient with how you edit, but of course there are also cons to this technique as well because you are not seeing the overall footage or the overall editing that is being worked on unless you render it uh, which can take some time. But this is a way that I use myself when I use an Intel Mac. It was an absolute struggle and this is something I can share with you guys. The next and final trick to make your Final Cut Pro a lot faster is to basically invest in external hard drive. If you don't know, if you have a very low storage, your Final Cut Pro and everything will basically run slower as well. So that is why these kind of dangling thing right here is very useful. I have a Samsung T5 and also a SanDisk uh, V2, I believe. Uh, this one is one terabyte, that one is two terabyte. Sometimes during holiday, you can find this for an absolute staggering price of around 130 to 200 dollars, which is cheaper than what the Apple Store provide, which I believe to upgrade from 512 to one terabyte, that would be $200. Whereas if you buy one terabyte of this, it's only $120 to $150, depending on the season that you buy it in. So it's really cool to be able to have an extra one terabyte to edit your Final Cut Pro on. And as a special and additional tip for you, I will be sharing you on how I organize my workflow on this SSD. So if you go to my SanDisk Extreme SSD, so basically I organize it in a way that I have my Final Cut Pro resources right here with all of the effects, the sunlight, the light rays, those kind of stuff and all of my project goes here. An example of that, I can go to my Final Cut Pro uh, project which is inside of here. I remember all the file paths. So here is the Final Cut Pro. It creates the proxy media, original and optimized media. So that is how I sort of organize all of it and make sure you keep it clean because if you don't keep it clean, your external will just be another macOS storage whereby you don't know which is which and it will become a cluttered mess and you don't know what to delete and soon you're gonna have to buy a new one. You don't want to do that. So yeah, that is something that I can share with you guys. And hopefully you find this video to be useful. If you do, make sure to drop a like and a subscribe if possible. And with that being said, I will continue editing my client's project and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks and goodbye.